Hello everyone, let me show you how I knit this sock one at a time uh, from the toe up with afterthought heel. All the timestamps are down below, which means that when you click on the time, it will direct you to a certain section. So you can come back when you, I don't know, finish knitting a tube to the part you want. Second of all, I'm going to add other tutorials because I have on this channel a separate tutorial how I do a afterthought heel, how I do a toe, uh, how I do a just tubular bind off because that's how I finish over here, although I also showed you a different technique. There is a pattern down below linked to this tutorial, so if you don't want to follow and you just want to grab a piece and do it that way, off you go. So just in case something is not clear that I'm saying it to you over here, just go down below, check on the tutorial for the heel or for the toe. Maybe I'm explaining it a little bit better. And don't forget to write down your number. So if you cast it on 12 like I did, if you increased the certain number of stitches over here, um, did you do a tubular or the second option, write it down down below. Even in the brackets, you can write down this sucks for you or for someone else. So maybe in the future, when you want to repeat this for yourself or for a friend, you will have all those informations down below. I will not delete comments. So I want to see how you're getting on and yeah, let's start. So first things first, need a yarn and it could be anything you like. It will determine how many stitches you need to cast on for a certain size of your foot in regards to circumference and length. This yarn, which is Patton's Croy socks, it's quite popular in the United States. I don't have a color in case you're asking me, but one important thing about any yarn, you're reading informations on the back of it. So you could see that in 100 grams, well, in here in the 50 grams, you have 152 meters, 166 yards. Mostly sock yarn come in 100 gram balls, so basically you just divide it by two to get to see if it's something similar or not. Therefore, this will be classified more as a sport weight yarn. Thicker than fingering or sock yarn, some would say, but thinner than DK double knit. Okay, I'll use two markers and these little ones you can probably find in my shop and you will check, check it, link down below. Uh, and then you need needles and I use two types but the same size. So the tips of those two needles are the same. I use you a size 2 which is 2.75 millimeter needles and as you can see they're different in regards to the size of the tip, the length of the core. So I will start doing toes with this using magic loop method and then I will switch it to knit in around with these little ones. I personally like to pull from the center because that way the the yarn comes out quicker, so that means you will knit socks quicker than if you need to each time pull the strand from the ball from the outside, but that's just preference. And as you can see, I pulled the yarn from the inside. Something like this occurred, but I'm thinking to cut it and start with a solid color first. Again, personal preferences. Right, so what I do, I cast on using Judy's matching cast. I normally just randomly pull twice and start from there, but you can actually count it by wrapping the yarn around your needle as many times as you would cast on half of your stitches. I'm going to cast on 24 stitches, which means 12 stitches per needle. And hopefully you can see it, the yarn from the ball comes from here, from the tail, from there, and I'm grabbing it like that. So this is from the tail and this is from the ball. Okay. We're holding the needles together and now hopefully you can see it. I'll just put it on and twist. So underneath the needle, you can feel that you can hold the needle if you let it go. Okay, and from that moment, that would be stitch one on one needle and another stitch on another. So two stitches, but I'm counting 12. So basically will be two, three, four, five. So how I do it, 
and the yarn that I have outside goes on the needle that is farther away from me. The one, the yarn that is farther away from me goes to the needle that is close to me. Um, yeah. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Always count. And when you finish with that, you grab the needles with your left hand. Put the yarn, the one that you're, it's from the ball, can make easy to mistake, pull the yarn, the needle, the, pull the needle from below, and then now you can knit first round. Lovely. And now I knit to the back, just for the second half of the stitches. And I would call that this is kind of as a top round. Just to remind you, first half you're knitting through the fr front loop, the second half from the back loop. And in this stage I like to mark the beginning of the round. And let's use our mittens. The way I like to do it, I just basically place the marker between and that way that this size side is always starting one because for a while I'll be just working from one side to another side. Okay, so let's start our increasing. There's many ways of increasing in the socks and there's different patterns how to increase after how many rounds you want to do it. I'm just showing you the simplest way that I like to do. So I'm just saying out here, my preference. So I'm going to show you two rounds and those two rounds will be repeating until you get a number of stitches you like. And how do you know that you would like them or want them? With this method, you have a cord and at some point you can actually slide your stitches on this cord and put it on the foot and you will know if it's too wide or is it not wide enough and you need more stitches to increase. Okay, so let me show you how I increase. I'll be repeating the same thing on both needles. So increase is four stitches overall or two stitches per needle as you would want to say that too. So let's see. So I'm going to slide a needle as you can see the bottom one and start knitting. And the first, I knit first stitch and then I do yarn over. But the way I do yarn over is from the behind to the front. Okay. And then we're knitting until the last stitch on the needle. And then once you're there, we'll be doing a yarn over, but from the front to the back. Okay, that's it. We knitted the last stitch and we're moving to the next, repeating the same thing, okay? So again, we're knit first stitch, do yarn over from the back to the front, and then knit until the last stitch. Once that's done, we go from the front to the back with the yarn over and knit the last stitch. And we finish the round. Let's start the second round. The second round we're going to knit first stitch and then knit the yarn over that we did as we normally do, right way, knitting through the front leg because it leads on the right and I like to say if it leans on the right it has to be knit the right way. And then we're knitting till the two stitches left on the needle and by that we're reaching to our yarn over and then we're, it's leaning to the left. So because it's left, we have to knit the wrong way. So through the back loop over here. So what we're trying to achieve, that we're not achieving holes as you would do when you normally do like, um, yarn overs in the lace pattern, 
but we're creating a stitch. And we knit the last stitch. We do the same on the second needle. And those two rounds that we just done, we'll repeat them until we have a certain number of stitches. Well, in my case, I'm knitting these socks for myself, so I'll be reaching two 48 stitches. I like this method of increase because at any stage you stop, you will know where you're at because either you have yarn overs, so you know the second round, if you just left it and pick it up again, you know that you need to knit the round around and knitting to those uh, yarn overs. If you don't have yarn overs, you know that the next round that you're going to do means that you have to create yarn overs. That's that. Okay, so let's show you my lovely toe. One more thing about yarn overs, uh, not only in this, but maybe even in the future, handy information. Sometimes it shows like this, and you may not know what to do. So basically, if you see kind of a pearl thing, it should go on uh, this side. So just move it slightly to the back because that pearl kind of moved. So you do that and then you will see then you knit first stitch and when you take the stitch off, once you finish knitting, you could see a perfect yarn over. Just saying. I hope to have a pattern written down for you down below so you can go and check on Reverly, but you may notice that this is what I'm calling this yarn over as a yarn yarn over right. So Y O R, because if you come back in the next round and knit through it the right way, you will get right decrease and you will get an extra stitch, not a hole. Another one, and the one from the front to the back, either I call it yarn over or yarn over left, because in this pattern I want to emphasize. That one yarn over is different than the other one and to be honest the one that if you see yarn over without saying anything it is always the one on the left now i think i think my toe is over i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so 24 on one needle by two it's 48 stitches and at this stage you can just Put your lovely toes in here and see, do you like that stretch or do you want less? Stretch socks on your toes if you don't. If it's stretching too much, I would recommend you to put an extra um, four stitches decreases. So 48, the next stage would be 52 um, and then 56 and so on, so on. Because in each round we're adding four stitches. So those numbers you uh, need to think of 44, 48, 52, 56, 60, 64. If you're not sure, keep on knitting using the magic loop method. If you're happy with the knitting at this point, you can switch to a circular needles. Now, before you do that, if you're happy with your number, take your marker and put it on the first, I like to put it on the first stitch, leg in front, and put it in. That way, when I'll be knitting a second sock, I'll do the same thing, and I could count how many rounds I did when I marked for a heel. That's why I have a second marker, so at some point I will just mark the side of the sock. Okay, let me show you how I switch. So basically I'm pulling out the needle in the back, just because on its way, and then I'm taking uh, these needles and knitting the first stitch, try to keep it close. Lovely, once you finish, then you have to pull the first needle to get it over here. And then it will be a little bit interesting, let's say that way, to knit. Because one is very straight and another one is very bendy. But slowly, 
you will get it. more you take off from the left needle it's easier to knit as you may notice and that's that as you can see i marked the first stitch below and it's quite handy because i have it actually in a new color because this is a stripy yarn um, and from now on what we do we're just knit in the round so how I do it, I basically just move the stitches now around the needle and there is no pulling of the cord of the needles so that's kind of time consuming so these needles are time savers because you just basically the only thing you need to do it's from time to time maybe more often than usual pull the stitches around just to have nice feeling at the beginning because we're just finished a toe you may feel bigger stretch but once you knit and around for maybe five six rounds it gets easier and e it has less and less tension on your needles. There are shorter, the same size, but shorter needles. So the holding them, it's slightly different um, than these long ones. So as you can see, I'm just knitting in the round. So one thing um, you need to remember that at some point we'll be marking the side um, of, the, of the sock. But it is handy to knit a few rounds to the section when you have the beginning of the round. So as you can see, we have the Vs and the right legs going up and then it should end up on the left needle. That way, I know that the bar over here is the bar dividing beginning and end. And this is the same way I mark for the heel when I get to it. <laughs> Or, even if I forget, it will be easier for me once I have a long tube to see where exactly I need to move it up. So this stays for good until I finish the second sock. But this will move up for me to decide where to put my heel. So where do I like to put my heel? Uh, a special marker what I'm going to do because I'll be doing a thought heel in a sec what that's about. Um, it's two inches, one and a half inch away less than my foot length okay so the number of stitches that i have my needles how many i have in regards to my circumference of my of my foot about the length of my foot that's what the rounds indicates how many rounds i have to make to get there so in this case i'm knitting socks for myself as i said uh, i'm using 48 stitches because that will give me approximately nine centimeters over here flat but in some case if I have a friend who would have the same circumference of, of the foot but different length of the foot because I'm doing after thought heel, I can always change my mind while I'm knitting it that these socks will be for someone else than me. Okay, let me knit a long tube and we'll back soon. Now, hello, hello. It is another day. I know you don't feel it like it, uh, like it is, but it is. So as you can see, I've done a tube and how long you have to go until you mark your heel. Mark it, like I said, two inches before I finish the heel, something like that. And now it's time to do ribbing. So we done the foot, we done the cuff, and now we're doing a ribbing. And I had a second thoughts about it. I know I'm going to do one by one rib, you can do two by two, but just to bear in mind that your ribbing has to be divided by, no, your number of stitches has to be divided by the number of your ribbing. So for instance, if I have uh, 48 stitches over here and I do one by one rib, which I have to divide by two because we're talking about two stitches, then 48 by 2 is 24, so I can do it. Then let's say I want to do 2 by 2 rib, uh, so that's 4 stitches, so I have to divide it by 4. So if I have 48 stitches, can I do by 4? Yes, I can. That would be 14. 
Um, you obviously, you can go with different stuff. You can do one knit, two pearls, or you can do two knits, one pearl, probably more makes more sense. And then you will have a number of stitches dividable by three, if you're thinking about that. Over here, I would have to have a setup round, which would most of the time in the pattern says that we will decrease or increase number of stitches to match a next section. So to match um, ribbing in here, for instance. Okay, so uh, why I was so skeptic? If you can see the pattern, how it goes with the yarn, like I said, I'm not mixing anything. This beautiful yarn make, uh, does it for itself. Um, I can notice that I can notice that I'm on the green, which means the next will be blue and some kind of pinkish, and we we'll go to the red. And normally, I'm not really a fan when you pearl on the on the change of the color because the pearls kind of shows up more and I'm not a fan of that. So I will modify it a little bit over here and hopefully you will, you won't have to do it, but in case you're interested. Anyway, I'll show you. Okay, I'm going to use another marker just to mark beginning rounds. Beginning of the round. So how do I do it? I'll just follow the V. Yes. And put it over here. Just on the ladder between two stitches. Okay, so I want to do one by one. So I'll knit. And now I'll purl. Normally you purl this way, but you probably will notice that I do a different way. <laughs> um, so the purling that I do is uh, the one that gives you a twisted knit stitch on the wrong side but in a different rotation than standard twisted purl stitch. Just saying. I know for beginners I probably said too many words now but anyway. Now so true leafing can do one by one, continue that, but as you can see I'm in a stage that my color is changing. So if I had done something like this, you could see, hopefully you can see, that this pearl is a green, but the loop on the top is blue. And if I continue that, you could see that those pearls are more visible. I'm not really a fan. So what I do, I will basically knit until I run out of green colors on my needle. I know, I've done already one by one, but this is how it goes. Yes, I'm in the section that I have knits and pearls and I will just knit because I still, I, I'm still blue. I'll show you if I've done this. Again, visible difference. It's just a personal preference. You don't have to do it the way I do it now. But definitely if you have a bigger stripes, so what by bigger I mean you will have few rounds of one colour, then it doesn't really you won't see it so much. Okay, as you can see I reached the section when I started blue and now I can continue with the ribbing, but obviously I will need to see what I should knit now. So I have Knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, should be a pearl. That's that. Um, around somewhere over here in regards to color pattern, um, I'll be doing slightly the same thing over here. This section is similar, so I'll continue standard knit and pearl, shouldn't be some, so visible. But as you can see, there's a big contrast between the pink and the red, so I'll do the same thing. And then I'll do a few rounds, and I will do the bind off, which will be a tubal bind off. Now, are you still with me? So exactly I followed what I said, but if you check in the pattern that I put the link down below, it will be just standard knit one per one for certain rounds, number of rounds, or as long as you want. Um, so yeah, so in this case, because this is kind of the yarn I'm working, I figure out that I have, we can count one, two, three, four, five, five rounds of red and I'm already on the third one so as you can see for my tubular bind off I would want maybe two or three rounds 
So what I'm going to do, I will try to see if I can finish around on the red and then start tubular with the blue. You know what, the best way for me would be if I had a sport weight one color yarn <laughs> and just do ribbing in that color. But unfortunately, I don't have it. So that's another option you can choose. So basically, after knitting a cuff, we just cut the yarn, leave a long end to weave in, and then just join another color and just do it in a different color. Would be way, way easier. <laughs> so definitely give me a like uh, over here, um, because that's, that's, that's something over here. Right, so uh, let's see, can I do it? So far, I have approximately one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds done, and it's from here till here, and I'm not sure is that enough, ten rounds, hmm, I would really want to have another five. Okay, so I will have a bit of red over here, but I don't mind, and what I need to do now, I need to specify how long I need uh, my yarn to be for tubular. Before I do that, I know not everyone likes tubular, so if you I'm not a fan to grab a tapestry needle to do so because you need tapestry needle. Um, I'll show you a different one, okay? So first I'll just do a bit so you can see how how it goes and I'll just go back and I'll show tubular. So basically what you do, um, so this is our last stitch, right? So normally there's a marker but I have it down below so I have marks but this, this is my first stitch. So I'm going to just knit that first stitch and then check what kind of stitch I have on my left needle. And this is purl. So I'm going to purl that. So now I have two stitches on my right needle and I'm going to put them on the left needle and then knit to the back loop together. So I reduced one stitch. So already I have now, this is something that we will be repeating from now on, I have one stitch on the right needle and now I have a knit stitch on the left needle. So I'm going to knit that knit stitch and then knit this two, these two together. So I hope you can see it what I do over here. Instead of completely moving them fully on the left and taking out the right needle, I just keep the right needle because it just saves time and then just grab the yarn and pull it through. Okay, so now we're back to the beginning. We have one stitch on the right needle. We we'll check what kind of stitch we have on the left needle is a purl stitch. So we're going to purl and then we're going to put the left needle. I'm leaving the right, right? Because I'm going to knit two together through the back loop. And that's that. And again, so this is how we continue. Let me just move it for a sec over here. So this is what you're going to get. But I like a different finish. So maybe, maybe do more. A little bit faster. So I, as you can see, this is the finish you can get, and this will be written down below in the pattern. So just go with it, it's, it's fine. Basically, at the end of the day, whoever wears the sock on the leg, no one is looking at my ankles checking, or my cuffs, <laughs> checking what kind of a bind off I have on my socks. So, you know, do whatever you like. Oh, sometimes when you're coming back, as the stitches are falling down. So why do I know that? Well, dropped stitches, we call it, because it creates a ladder either in the front or in the back. And in this case, it was in the front because I dropped a purl stitch. So I just put the ladder on the left needle, stitch on the left needle, and pull the stitch through the ladder. So I'm pulling the ladder back. So that's what happens when you're going back sometimes and things are going not the way you want to do you know what? i'm going to show you how to do a knit one so you see now i dropped another stitch this is how this drop stitch looks like hopefully you can see it i'm putting the stitch on the needle because it's a knit, a knit stitch it will be other way around first i'm putting a stitch then i'm putting a ladder that it was created behind, well, dropped behind, and I'm just pulling the stitch through the ladder, and that ladder now is a stitch. Um, so the only thing when you drop even lo lower is just to maintain the order of the of the ladders, and you can see them where they're coming on the side, so that way it's, it's easier to know which one is which one. Okay, so I am back in the beginning, 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a tapestry needle. Tapestry needle is a blunt needle, but you know what? You work with whatever you have. So that means it's not so sharp. How long of the tail do we need? And what I found doing Chipula Pine off depends on the thickness of the yarn too. Um, so if I have thinner yarn, I may need less than I have a thicker yarn. Because everyone will tell you that it has to be in a three rounds of the circumference of the item you're knitting because you can do tubular bind off on the socks, you can do a tubular bind off around your wrists for your sweaters, for the bottom of the sweaters. It's a really beautiful finish, that's why I like it, and I don't mind doing um, it. So, yeah, so over here I have a sport. So, you see, my hand is kind of the something similar. So, let's so let's have so let's have let's so let's have a bit and then wrap one two three but you know what i'll do i'll just do as far as this color is so it's definitely approximately four better remember better more than less now so i'm putting the yarn on the needle and the way the easiest way is to bend the thread and this loop goes way easier doesn't split the plies of the strand um something like this okay and what I like to do, I like to pull it until I, that end is here and I have just maybe that section of a single strand. So you're not pulling too much. Okay, I have a separate video in case this one won't work the way I want to, so I'll definitely check the down below. Maybe I will explain it better, but I'll do my best. So let's do this. I like to do it in three phases. Phase one. We're taking off the stitch as if to knit and then pull the tapestry needle through the second now stitch on the left needle as if to purl and we just have to pull this yarn through. That was first phase. Second, now we're going to take the stitch off the needle as if to purl and then put the tapestry needle between two stitches, okay? And again. That was phase two. Phase three is that we're going to put the tapestry needle as if to knit through the second stitch on the left needle, and then we're just pulling through. Okay, that's that. So now, every time we start phase one, we have to have, in this case, and it only works for one by one, rib, just telling you, um, when you have a knit stitch, okay? When you think about it, you would knit this stitch. So you put the needle as if to knit, and then the second one as if to purl, okay? Right. So I want you to focus how the first phase finishes. It finishes that the strand goes through the second um, stitch. So in case you have to make a tea or someone is calling you to do something, at least when you come back, oh yeah, I finished phase one. Next, we'll do phase two. So now this one is, if you actually see it through over here, it's a purl stitch. So we're going to put as if to purl and take it out and then put between. So now second phase finishes that you have only one stitch and straight away the strand is coming out between it. Just in case you dropped it and you come back to it, if it's just one stitch and the yarn, you just finish phase two. And phase three is when we're putting the yarn uh, through the purl stitch, right, per column, as if to knit, and we take it out. So when you finish at this stage, you could see you still have two stitches, and the yarn is coming from behind. It's kind of handy to know. Okay, so let's do it one more time. Phase one, we ask to knit, take out, Put it through, take it out, take it out, take it off, sorry, between, and then poke it through. Unusual here. Okay, maybe slower because probably you're doing the same thing now. So I'm not wasting your time, it will take a while. So as if to knit off the second through. Take it off between. And now the second third. And 
hopefully you can see it how it looks it kind of goes around it doesn't have a very specified edge over here it looks like if the fabric was rounded to the center so that's what we like about but everyone likes different things so we shall see anyway i come back to you once i I uh, have only two stitches left. Okay, so hopefully you can see I have only two stitches on my needle. And what I'm going to do at the moment, I'm going to put them on the tapestry needle. Like this. Because to finish our round, we need four stitches, right? So I'm going to lift this stitch. Like this. From the knit column. And at this point, doesn't really matter too much. Another stitch next to it. So put it all back on the left needle. And we're going to finish um, the tubular one more time. It will be phase one, phase two. And phase three and take them both off now it joins the round over here <laughs> I know it did not work the way I would want to probably I could do one more round of the ribbing with the blue color and finish I might have enough no I don't think so I wouldn't um, but anyway so this is how it would end it up and now we're going to just to weave an ends so in case you're still not happy how it's connected, I normally what I like to do, just make sure and secure it. So I'm going on the wrong side, take my tapestry and run through the knit column on the wrong side. Not too tight. And normally I would wave an ends going under like a snake from one side to another side of this knit column. But I'm afraid that blue will pop on the other side. So I will try to wave it end along this blue section so it kind of hides. Wrap it around so it's not only straight line. Change direction. So basically going through. And just go like this. Change direction. And cut the yarn. So far so good. The next stage we're going to do after thought heel. I'll be telling you how to do it, but if you're looking for a shorter video, there's one on the channel, so I'm going to put a link down below. Just in case my explanations is a little bit better than, than here. Um, so yeah, so let's see how we do it. Okay, so we have this first sock, and I normally leave this marker. Obviously, you have to leave this marker at the moment, but you can't remove the first one over here. Now, to do a thought heel, we're going to use the needles that we use to knit toes. And the first thing what we're going to do, we're going to pick up um, stitches. The next things what we're going to do, we're going to use these needles and then we'll be knitting using magic loop method. Um, but over here now from the marker, I'm going to pick up half of the stitches that I cast it on overall. So in my case, I have 48, I need to pick up 24. I'm going to pick a right leg. So as I know that this was the beginning of the round, so it's in my side of the sock, even though it may sometimes does not look at, at it because we knit in the spiral and the sock has to adjust um, after a while. So I hope you'll be able to see it. So I'm going to pick the second, right? It kind of worked well because in this color combination, I will leave one round, I will pick up the second, I will be cutting then later the middle, pick up the higher, and then leave another one. So it's really perfect middle spot. So yeah, let's try without a marker. <laughs> like this one, two, three, four. Yay, so I have one thing done and now I have to leave the row over and pick up above that so exactly the same thing now it's kind of easier because I see 
that when you follow the column of the knit you could see below that I already grabbed um, that left leg so I don't really have to count because I see there's one more over here hiding okay but just to be sure count that you have the same number here and this and here because this will be our round in a sec now the next stage what I like to do I like to put my hand inside and just to be sure that I'm only knitting not knitting I'm cutting one one stitch and halfway through I'm going to cut it so if I have 24 that means that 12 stitches 1 2 3 4 5 6 is the center so I'm grabbing right leg of a stitch and a cut basically now we un basically now we unravel so I'm I like to still hold it this way and leg by leg we're just unraveling it until I like to see still two legs over here coming from the stitch on the cord over here and the same story you look up there is a stitch on the cord and there is there are two legs coming out from it now we're going to put the ends inside because we'll be waving them in later on and this time we can move the marker to mark the beginning of the round. How I like to do it, I just mark actually what size is a beginning. So for me, it doesn't really matter. I'll just put the marker over here so I can see it. So because from now on we'll be moving this way or this way, so I know this is the start. We're going to grab the yarn. I'll just pick whatever it's here. It will be different. And now when I'm holding the yarn, I'm going to knit first stitch and I would double check that I'm knitting with a strand from the ball and we're going to do three rounds like this if you have more let's say if you cast it on maybe 64 stitches using sport weight maybe go four rounds I would say um, that's my recommendation but you should be fine with three otherwise. And we knit. What I like to do, I like to grab two strands, or wrap them around and put them in. Now, in this case, when I'm doing a second round, it's very important to do those two stitches tight. Do not worry, you still have two ends over here to wave in in case you will have a gap, and it happens to me too. I just nicely wave it in the way that it closed the gap. So try to do it tight. Don't worry because this first stitch is loose stitch because the end is just dingling inside. So you can definitely make it tighter. Uh, you just want your stitch to be as tiny as you can. Okay, see you when we do three rounds. Now I have done three rounds and I will be repeating now a sequence um, every two rounds. So the first round I will decrease and another round I will just knit in a round. So how I decrease in the first round. I'll just knit one stitch. Okay, SSK. So what does it mean? So you slope first stitch as if to knit and then the second stitch as if to knit. Then you put those two together and then you're knitting through both of them through the back loop. That's SSK. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to knit until we reach three, st uh, three stitches, last three stitches on the needle. And then when we get there, we, do, we will do knit two together, which means that we're going to knit through two stitches for the front loop <laughs> legs um, and pull it tightly and knit the last stitch. I'll let that and we'll repeat that on the other side. So we are decreasing four stitches per round. So again, slip, slip, put it through. And as I showed you before, I like to 
don't waste time and just pull the yarn through. Um, so I'm not taking the needle off and just keeping the needle grabbing a yarn. I knit continental style. I have mentioned that in the beginning. Hopefully I did. So that's that. And again over here, knit two together and one. Okay, once that's done, you can kind of see sometimes if you have to drop it that this stitch holds two, if you kind of open it up, two loops on itself. So in case you have to drop it, do you make a coffee or anything else, you will know that now we should do a knit round. And sometimes it's even easy if you just kind of help yourself to see what's and that about, okay? From time to time, if you're a beginner, I should be doing that too, uh, check that you have equal number of stitches on each needle, okay, when you finish a round. Sometimes you may be distracted, even though you know what you're doing. And if that happens, then try to decrease the side that need those need those stitches on the needle that you have more and then go back to your thing again okay um yeah so those two rounds we're going to repeat until i have 12 stitches left on each needle so 24 overall and then we'll do a kitchener stitch so yay see you in a sec now, so this is the last round that I decreased and I have now 12 stitches on both needles. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting doubles. Okay, so the next thing what I'm going to do, I need to make a long enough strand, do Kitchener stitch. And it's kind of the same thing. You just try to have the, okay, so my three fingers over here is kind of the, the size of the area that I want to Kitchener, use the Kitchener stitch. So a little bit more, and now I do one, two. It's definitely long enough. I will have loads of, I will have a long, uh, with this, I will have a long tail to weave in later on. Okay, so we put it on, and now let's see how we do that. So basically we'll be working on two stitches on the front needle and two stitches on the back needle and that's how we're going to jump from one to another. You've done the chibula. If you've done chibula, this will be easy for you too. So we're going to remember two things. When you have the stitches on this needle maybe, you could see a knit fabric, right? So lovely knit stitches. But you, when you have a peek inside over here, you see a purl stitches, right? Yes. So whatever facing you, this is how you start. I like to remember this way. So, because something is facing me from the knit side, I will be putting the tapestry needle as if to knit, take the stitch off, and put it as to purl through the second stitch, well now the first one on the left needle, and pull it. That's it. Then we're going to the second needle, and because that fabric faces me purl up, um, faces me with the purl stitches, I will put the needle as if to purl, take it off, and as if to knit, we will put the tapestry needle through the next stitch and pull it through. So again, as if to knit, take it off, as if to purl, leave it, as if to purl, take it off, as if to knit, leave it <laughs> and so on and so on don't do it too tight okay but not too loose either so like a firm tug but not too tight very handy technique if you rip something in your sweater and you have to Joined it together, I would say. Probably you could use it. And to tell you straight away, this was a modified Kitchener stitch because there are some extra things you do at the beginning. 
but I found it as you could see over here it's it's a nice edge so there was there is no need and if I do that extra thing that I'm not going to tell you about I have this kind of like in the 80s shoulder for the oh yeah I'm not sure now should which way suit and the two left and I basically as if to knit take it off as if the pearl take it off pull the yarn through so as you can see it is just amazing technique I can take this marker off and I will keep the one over here I'm putting this information over here now because I forgot to tell you to make sure to count how many rounds you did before you uh, cut the yarn for the heel okay so write it down somewhere even under this video in the comments so then you can come back and you can do exactly the same number of stitches unless you can count it later on but who would who would just write it down down below okay let's go back to our okay so now we're just putting that tapestry needle inside I just tuck it in flip everything to the wrong side pull and then uh, weave in ends I like to weave in ends just by following the stitch so like a horseshoe or Omega motion so I'm just following down up and again and as I told you I always have enough to do it through the whole edge let's go that way okay and you just cut the yarn okay let's remove this one now what you do you just flip it over but before you do that and you'll be waving in ends check how happy you are with the sides if you see a little bit of gaps poking over here um, you will know to kind of wave in ends to hide them and in this method because we were using we were cutting yarn we do have a yarn over here to wave in and nicely tidy up over here uh, if you knitting any other types of uh, heels you may not have these strands on the side so then if you want to hide it you will have to cut the yarn and then weave it in uh, an extra strand here and there to cover some holes okay so that's another thing that I really like it's less stressful um, you always have an option later on in case you know it did not work the way you want to so maybe I'll show you how I do it because I'm not really happy about those two I kind of probably pulled it too tight it happens so basically I'm just going through the pearl bumps I see a pearl bump I'm putting a tapestry needle through it and I don't really mind direction until I'm kind of doing a waving thing as you can see covering those gaps not too tight because we're trying to fill in not too close um, and then wave in and from here to there keep those ends you can make a toy a stuffy and put it in inside so handy like that or if you're making a pom-pom you can also use it and over here we have two so even more than a plenty and where's the tapestry needle? okay so the same story we try to go through the poor bombs and you're not doing tight because we just want to fill in the gaps not to pull the sides together you can even go through the same spot if you want to see it's way better and horseshoe shape following the strand a few times to secure it and cut the yarn Thank you.